Hello, welcome back. I'm Alyssa and today's video is going to be an interesting one. I've been meaning to chop my nine foot moss pole. It's a Monstera siltificana and I started it from a tiny little plant cuttings on a pole and it grew to the top of a three foot pole. I extended it, grew to the top of the six foot. I wish, <laughs> I wish I would have chopped it then and uh, let it continue climbing like I normally do. But for some reason, I thought a nine foot moss pole in my head was a good idea. So I added another third extension on and it's too tall. It won't stand up, it's wobbly. I ended up throwing it outside here and it's been outside for months, ever since I, ever since March. I think March is when I put my plants out here. So March, April, May, June, July. It's been out here four months. Has it grown a whole lot? Not really, it's been severely neglected. It's very hot right now. We were at the end of July and I'm gonna show you what it looks like and where I have it, but we are going to completely take it apart and start over basically. I don't know how this is gonna go because since it's been outside, I don't really want to bring it inside and do it and I don't wanna make a mess inside. But the thing is it's so hot that my camera hates being outside. But what I was thinking is actually sitting my camera inside right there so that it's in the air conditioning and I'll work like in this little area. I did the same thing with my philodendron Mikan's moss pole. I took it apart, added vines in, and I went into a lot more detail with that one and I did that one in my plant room. So I will link that up here if you haven't seen it. It's kind of gonna be a similar process. I do wanna take my hose and completely soak it first and drench it so that the moss is hydrated because moss, dry moss is not easy to work with. I'll spray the leaves off and everything so we'll get as many critters off as we can. And lizards have been running up and down the pole. It's so funny. Uh, there's been like family of lizards that just use the pole as like a means to get from the ground to the top of the house. It's so funny. The cats love watching them. Oh, and my Monstera siltificana is a regular form. It's what I know it as. It's already fenestrated, so I have lots of leaves that have the holes in them. There is a Monstera siltificana El Salvador, which looks a little bit different and it's a larger form. I don't have that one, so this is the tinier one. But yeah, I'm gonna show you the pole and its current setup, what it's looking like, and then we'll get our supplies and try and take apart this pole. I'm a little bit of a mess because I went for a bike ride, so I figured I am going to just get this done today. I've been meaning to do it. I keep putting it off, so I am doing it. I'm gonna crack open an energy drink to motivate me to get this done. And we're gonna get started here. So I hope you enjoy and let's get to it. You guys are so lazy. Yeah. Honey noon. Say it feels nice and warm out here. <laughs> All right, let me take you to the moss pole. So we have to go on the outside, outside. <laughs> so here she is, if you can see in this corner. I wet the pole a couple days ago, but I'm sure it's bone dry. Yeah, we crunchy again. So it's constantly being dehydrated and I feel bad for it. It's actually growing into the ceiling up there and I have no idea what's going on. Where did we extend it last? Right here and I honestly I wished I would have chopped it because this vine I'm going to undo anyway and I can't really water the top of it that well and it's just getting watered by the hose out here. The bottom of it is just like crisping because it's not getting any water and I have a vine that is growing all the way off the pole. It's been through a lot out here. It's been rained on, the wind has blown it like crazy. It's been neglected, like I said, out here for four months in the heat. And yeah, I'm gonna get it taken care of. I don't think it has passed, but we'll see. We'll, we will do a little inspection. But yeah, this is what the uh, fenestrated leaves look like. They start getting the little holes. And it's, I mean, there's some decent sized leaves on here. And then, um, yeah, I just neglected it. So yeah, it's very beautiful plant and it's a Monstera. So I love Monsteras. I can't wait to get this done and taken care of. Oh. 
All right, first things first, I'm going to, I have two shears. I'm gonna cut the wire with, or the zip ties with this one. I'm gonna cut the vine with this one. Cause I'm gonna go ahead and cut it into three sections before I spray it. So where I have the pole connected, I'm going to basically cut the vine where it's connected. I'm gonna cut on the vine right here. One, er. I have another vine over here I'm gonna cut. I, I think only two vines climbed up, which is kind of crazy. I was worried that some of the aerial roots have grown down into this middle section. So all I'm gonna do is just cut those aerial roots that have grown. There's just not an easier way to take to take them out, I guess, which kind of stinks, but it's okay. So I have an aerial root here I'm gonna cut and an aerial root here I'm gonna cut. They'll grow a uh, new aerial root. Oh, I got one more zip tie still attached. Okay. And it should lift right off. Da -da. Uh. Why is it not lifting off? Oh, I have another vine over here. I'm trying to be careful because there's a bunch of geese poo uh, in the yard because they went crazy yesterday with the bird feeder. I had literally just got a bird feeder a few days ago and I put it out and then a horde of geese just swarmed it. Okay. So this is our top section. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that is one. We're just going to lay this down in the grass so that we can soak it. Okay, this section here, same thing. I want to get rid of this bottom layer. So we are connected all the way down here. You can barely see right here. This long one that has grown off, I'm going to go ahead and cut that. We're going to cut it here. It's got one long vine. All right, I'm gonna cut on the vine right here. Let's cut. I'm just cutting away, or cutting the vines in half. Stake is removed. See, it doesn't look so bad when it's <laughs> it's not nine feet tall. Uh, yeah, but it's for the best. I can't wait to get this plant, like I said, back growing better again. I had some cuttings that have fallen off. I think they probably just, when I clip them. So like this has a good hefty aerial root system starting. So I'll probably pluck that on the end of the new pole. And I have some other pieces like that one's a pretty good hefty size too. Look at that has a decent little aerial root, so that'll be perfect for the soil. And some of the, uh, the longer vine like this was just growing in the air, and you can see all those aerial roots have come out from being outside in the humidity. So any of these guys, I think I'm just gonna end up uh, propagating all those. So I'm gonna let those three poles kind of soak up that moisture for a little bit, kind of get hydrated. It's really important when you are propagating or doing a project, like even repotting, that the plant is hydrated because a, dehydra a dehydrated plant is stressed and then you can induce more stress 
when you're messing with the roots and it can cause shock. So I'm gonna take, let it take up the moisture it can uh, for the next little bit here. And then I'm gonna create my little workstation right here and we'll get to rebuilding this pull. Okay, I have you down a little bit low and I have you in the opposite direction of the light. So hopefully you can kind of make out what I'm doing still. I'll just give you an overview <laughs> really quick. So here's the bottom that I'm completely taking off. I wanna use that pot. That's one of my favorite six century pot me pots. So I, um, I wanna completely, again, like take all these cuttings apart and I'll probably end up propagating these. And this one has like one vine. This was the top part that was growing off the pole. So I'm gonna prop, pretty much prop this entire thing because I don't think any of these nodes are really that rooted. I might actually take, um, well, I was trying to see. There's just a lot of aerial roots. I could try sticking some of this in or into the pole and seeing what will root. But since I chopped it and took away most of the roots, it's probably not gonna get the hydration it needs. It might be a little rooted on some of these other nodes, but we'll see. But this is gonna be our new top part of the pole. So um, I really don't have to do much of anything with it. I just have to open it up and take this entire cutting out. And this is our main part that we're working with here. This was a vine that I'm going to chop up there. So this will be our new bottom section. This was the middle part of the pole. It's where most of the volume is. So all these nodes up top, since it was the middle, I cut, you can see. So it's gonna reroute a growth point from the node below. So like right here, a new growth will come out right here. It might be a little bit smaller at first, but it shouldn't take too long to size up again and start fenestrating. And then I'm going to add the uh, this extension onto here. It's just going to be like an empty pole. So this here, since this was the middle section, I had that section over top sliding down over here. So it's pretty empty already. So I'm going to fill this section with soil and this will be planted as the new base, which is going to go in there. And again, like I said, I'm completely taking this whole thing apart, uh, that section. And I have some other cuts here that came off. Um, these ones here that I'm going to include. Probably, since that's at the bottom, I might include, I don't know where I want to include these. I'm going to slide these through the front here and put them somewhere to fill the pole out more. But in order to add the pieces in, what I have to do is open this up from the back like I did with my micans. I just have to very gently open this up and it's gonna be difficult because you see all of those aerial roots there that have kind of encapsulated the pole, but I'm gonna do my best. I, I don't have to take all of the moss out. I just have to kind of push some of it away in order to fit some of the vines uh, in here, but we'll see. I won't really know until I get to messing with it uh, and seeing what happens. I'm kind of like troubleshooting this as I go. I'm just not sure what I wanna tackle first. I think the easiest thing might be to take all, to take this vine out of here. But yeah, I have a feeling it's not gonna be that rooted. It's rooted a little bit, but it's not going to, I don't know if it's really gonna support being on a new pole, but we'll see. Okay, I was actually able to take this longer vine. This was the top growth. It had some roots in the moss. I was very gentle and just started sliding it out of here. So now I have like an empty pole. This is gonna be the top extension. So we have to add this into this middle one. And so this is what I'm concerned about. I hope there's no creepy crawlies in the soil. Uh, we're gonna completely chuck this base. This is probably so rooted in here. That is crazy. Uh, so this is going to be our bottom. It's going to be our pot. I have to wash that out. I'll 
I'll probably end up propagating a lot of these and doing some, uh, and just like a, like rerooting them in water or something. A lot of the vines here. I normally don't show this part. Uh, it kind of takes me a while. I was trying to see if I could, if I want to salvage any of these to add onto the new pole, but I don't know if I want to keep. There was one growth here that this vine that's hasn't been chopped, that's growing kind of nice. So I might include part of this vine. Let's see, I think till about, oh, till about here. Cause that one kind of looks nice. I can add that one on the pole as well. And I think everything else I'm just going to chop individually. So I'll just do this off camera because again, like I said, I'm not keeping this and the growth is just very sad, dehydrated. I have a few like nice looking leaves, but um, yeah, I'm going to cut this up individually. So we're going to set this aside. So this is what we are working with here. So we have this one we have to add in, this one we have to add in and this piece we want to add in and this long vine. I would like to include some of these cuts. I might actually chop this in half and try and include some of this. This was growing literally uh, <laughs> into the ceiling of the wall. So I don't know what this is going to do. Honestly, the vine's starting to get pretty thick right here though. It's just not that rooted is the only thing. I might cut this right here. Um, and I'm gonna cut this under here like that. I might try to include this, but I don't know, honestly, since it's not that rooted, I don't know if it's going to uh, root into there. Okay, one, two, three, four. Four cuttings we're gonna add into here, and then this was the bottom part. I think, I don't like that leaf. We're gonna prop that one. These were some big leaves at the bottom. I can actually add this entire vine into here. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I'll probably add, like maybe two or three on this side and then the other one I might add like one on this side and then one right here and we'll have a very full pole climbing up. All three vines I had to chop because I had to chop them in order to take the top extension off so these will take a while to start growing anyway so it'll be like uh, a pole like this for a while. I was hoping since I don't have a lot of roots to add in here I was hoping I could actually just squeeze uh, squeeze these nodes down in here. Do you know what I mean? Without having to open this all the way up. That would be ideal. I might actually try and not open this up. Let me see what I can do. I'm gonna play around with this. So basically all of these uh, roots, I'm going to be sticking in here, adding the roots to the front and uh, plucking them all in there. And some of these cuttings don't survive. I'll try and add them in the pole and then sometimes they just, uh, they just don't make it because they don't get enough moisture. If they're not rooted that well, they don't do well. So it depends. I'll add them on in hopes that they make it, but we'll see. We'll kind of see what happens. So that one's added on. as long as you're keeping your pole moist, like I'll just have to be really mindful to keep this pole hydrated. I can pretty much add 
cuttings wherever I want on here as long as there's some roots so I basically just added a cutting right here at the top and once I'm done I'll give you guys a different angle and some different light so you can kind of see what I'm doing a little bit better too so yeah I'm gonna work on adding the other vines through the front and then I'm going to wash this pot out and then I will back you guys out and we will pot up this uh, pole and I'll show you all the cuttings I added on and then we'll, we'll very quickly add this extension on. This child knows whenever I'm getting ready to turn the camera back on, she takes my seat. You are the queen of taking my seat. Yeah. You were just snoozing in the chair. Yeah. You were just snoozing. <laughs> Ow. Baby. Yeah. Okay, let me show you what I have going on. So I cleaned up my mess and I got rid of the base and I took all the cuttings. So I ended up taking all the cuttings I could and I have them in a cup of water. I got rid of the roots that were in the moss. I just cut them off. They'll re-root in water. And I'll just make a new trailing basket or just get rid of these. They're mostly the, you know, the bottom cuts anyway. So, uh, that is that. And we have our empty pot and I have all of my supplies here. What I'm going to do first is we are going to add some soil into here. I actually need to close this up. Oh here on the bottom. I keep forgetting this was the middle compartment on the other pole, so it was already open here a little bit. I'm glad I'm finishing up here because it is getting hot. Don't eat the root, no. <laughs> Don't eat the root, Luna. You don't want to eat that, trust me. <laughs> Goofy girl. I was running well on my moss pole mix, so what I ended up doing was just throwing a bunch of ingredients uh, in here just to like... Watch out, girlfriend. I don't want you to get soil. Go on. Uh, just to aerate it some, but it's a lot of perlite and bark. here that's in the soil because that's just gonna rot and I'm gonna have to get rid of that one too okay oh I have a few more down here to get rid of that one and that one all right there I should be okay Before I fill up all the way, I'm going to add my fertilizer. And since I don't have a lot of roots down on the bottom cut since we chopped it, I'm just going to toss a little mycorrhizae in the soil just to help them out a little bit. Just tossing it right down in there. You don't have to sprinkle them on the roots. You can. Um, just mix it into the soil. And I'm gonna eyeball
eyeball a good tablespoon. Not quite a tablespoon. And then we're gonna fill up. Yeah, there's hardly any soil in this mix at all. It's very light and fluffy. Once I water this and once these actually root uh, in the soil, it's gonna help stabilize it a little bit better. Okay. So that is our base, and then I'm going to add the extension. And this should be a perfect fit since we didn't have to measure or do anything. Slide that down and then let's zip tie. Easy enough. I am considering adding like a one foot extension onto my Cebu Blue. And I don't know, because some of them are like five and a half feet because once you actually slide the extension over, you lose about five inches. And I have so many that need chopped coming up and I'm like, if I can get just like a couple more months <laughs> without having to chop so many at once. I'm definitely chopping my Marble Queen. That's my next pole chop. Uh, but yeah. I just, any taller than six feet, it gets to be too unsteady, unmanageable. I need to add some weight to the bottom. I need to water this soil and get a ceramic for it. All right, time to show you the finished pole. Again, she looks very sad because she's been outside. Hopefully the leaves will kind of perk up and straighten back up. She's been very dehydrated for months just with the heat out here. So hopefully in some time, she'll look a little bit better. I'm going to, um, let's see. I have her sitting in one of the new pots that I got for stability. And once she actually roots into the pole and the soil a little bit better, she'll be more stable. Once this plant actually reaches the top, I'm gonna continue to bend the vines back down. I don't think I'll do a chop and extend on this one because, I mean, I'm pretty happy with these fenestrated leaves. I don't know how big uh, this one actually gets because it's not, it's just the regular Silta Pecana. So I had four original vines and then I added a total of five. And I don't know how many of these other vines are actually gonna make it because I actually clipped some on. I clipped one on that edge here and it ends right there. And it wasn't really that rooted. So I don't, honestly, I don't know how it's gonna do. And then I ended up clipping, let's see. I clipped one right there, you can kind of see. Again, it's not that rooted, it's just like two nodes. And I added another one here. I added like a strand on the side. <laughs> and I think one of them went all the way down to the bottom. So we'll see what actually continues to grow and what 
doesn't make it. I'm very curious. All the top cuts again were chopped, so it is going to take a while for this plant to reroute energy to push new growth before it actually starts climbing up on the pole again. So I'm happy that it's going to take a while for this plant to actually do something and hopefully it'll just kind of focus on rooting and kind of reserving energy. I didn't do a full glance at the leaves. You know, I sprayed it off with the hose, but what I'm going to do is I believe I'm going to put probably two packs of beneficial mites on this plant because I have them active right now. And then once it actually gets stable and starts growing and has acclimated to being back indoors, the thing is, it's been in the shade, but it's been outside for four months, so it's really gonna need some light. So I think I have some small 10 watt clip bulbs. I might set one up and shine it on this plant just to help transition the ease going back inside. And I'll put it in that corner, that way I, I can keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't have any pests and it can get some light. And then I might think about moving it back into my plant room with the rest of them, but we'll see because it's already kind of crammed in there. But yeah, that is the finished pole. And um, let's see. And again, I sat all of these cuttings here. I have it on the shelf with my imports. I just have it right here. I'm gonna leave these cuttings. Whoop outside and water just you know again i'm just minimizing any pest spread <laughs> i'll just keep an eye on them i'm pretty certain like the plants in here don't really get past like the ones that are enclosed for the most part um it's just the ones that were like out there out there i have to be more mindful of so yeah hopefully this wasn't too crazy and chaotic for you guys and you somewhat enjoyed this i will save this to my moss pole playlist don't forget if you are interested in any moss pole content that i've done i have a whole playlist dedicated to moss poles it's getting close to 30 videos in there it's been a lot and i've done a, a lot of moss pole content in my repot playlist as well there's like probably 50 videos in there so Ones that are more specifically dedicated to moss poles, I try to save under my moss pole playlist. So you can refer back to them and I will make sure to link my moss pole playlist down below as well as all of my moss pole supplies. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. I love hearing from you guys down there. Thank you again and I will talk to you guys very soon.